What's up guys, it's Ethan 10 here. So a little bit of a different video today. I'm actually gonna be making a tier list video on all the different EVE Online E-War modules, at least for sub cap ships. I kind of left out the cap ships because quite frankly, I just don't have a lot of experience with them uh, at all. I've never flown a cap ship, probably won't anytime in the near future, especially since I'm, I'm a wormholer. So kind of take that into consideration. I am looking through this through the lens of a wormholer. I do have experience fighting in low sec nullsec you know but this is i'm probably mostly going to be looking through this through the lens of uh wormhole but you know a little bit of low sec and a little bit of nullsec um kind of like consideration or experience here for the most part so uh, if you guys don't know what a tier list video uh is i mean they're all over youtube people make tier list videos on on movies fast food uh, video game characters you name it it's all over so uh, obviously going from top to bottom uh, you know top tier is typically the best so i would say it's probably situationally the most useful like almost no matter what if someone brings this module it's pretty much always going to be useful uh a tier is that it's situationally useful all the time maybe there are some situations where it's a little bit less effective or some scenarios where it's not uh, as effective as it could be but it's still very very good b tier is that it's very situational um it's pretty hot and cold sometimes it could be very very effective other times it could be completely uh and utterly useless c tier for me is basically modules that perform very well but only on very certain ships or very very specific kind of fights outside of that again it's pretty useless and d tier is probably just the one i need to put at the whatever i need to put the lowest it's not completely useless but um it's only good on extremely specific ships or it's just hardly ever used because there's just uh, it's just a waste of a slot or there's something else better that could be placed there uh, instead so and i will be filling up all these slots i always thought it was a bit weird in tier lists where they only fill up like the top three or like top four and they leave like d tier d tier off uh, i will be filling all these up so uh sorry for all the ads it's just how it is on the website but as you can see this is all subcap e war um i will be putting a link down to this tier list so you guys can fill it out yourself as well and you guys can post a picture or just let me know what your guys' results are I'll probably end up putting this up on reddit too just kind of curious uh for the feedback uh, as well just kind of curious what people are putting stuff on so uh, so basically rate this on the effectiveness of an average PvP, PvP fight, number of ships that can use it, uh, does having the wrong scripts or colors make it useless, does it, ha does it have extra support from things like rigs, links, stuff like that. Um, I think all those things should be taken into consideration, but again, if you're not familiar with some of these modules, you can just put them where you think is going to be the best, you know, I don't think it's that big of a deal if your list is different than mine. So again, I'm going to be looking at this like mostly through like a wormholer, but obviously no sec and low sec is where I do a decent amount of PvP as well, so... First things first is the bubble. I know there is a launcher for it and I kind of mix it up between uh, some other stuff, but I, th I think the bubble honestly is S tier. Um, it's one of the very, very few ways other than obviously this other module here can do something similar. Uh, it's one of the very few ways you can actually displace characters that are warping in. So you can actually drag people, you can make a stop bubble, you can do all kinds of stuff. You can prevent people from warping on grid to like their allies if, as long as there's a bubble between you and them. It's, it's one of the very few ways you, like, there are some ships in the game that are literally impossible to kill unless you have a bubble, like Asteros, things like that, where they can just cloak and warp away, but if they, if there's a bubble, at least you have a chance to put up a bubble, ram into them, decloak them, and then grab them. You know, there's some ships that, it, they are quite literally impossible to catch unless you have um, a bubble. And of course, with bubbles, you have to be very careful. Sometimes you can uh, get your own characters killed. You can set up very bad warp ins for, for your allies. Sometimes you can get... Uh, people's pods killed which is i guess another benefit you can kill people's pods uh, in certain parts of space so yeah I, I really like the bubble it's it's kind of one of those things that just makes this game go round is just being able to hold people on grid and get them killed and displacement and i think is really really overpowered uh in evil mine especially when you come to uh, wormhole space so the next one is the burst jammer the burst jammer is it's it's definitely one of these bottom two and some of these i will actually move around as i'm kind of developing this um, I, I'm gonna put it here at the bottom. It's so situationally niche. Very few ships can actually use it. I, it's probably like mostly like haulers or something like that. But even then, most haulers you can't use a burst jammer. I believe if you have a nullifier, so you kind of have to pick one or the other. And I feel like most ships would rather have the nullifier. Um, burst jammer is just it's just very very niche. Basically, it's a it's an ECM that kind of lands around you. You can't really use it um, in certain parts of space because it'll immediately either get you concorded or you lose a lot of sex status because you're using it in like low sec, all kinds of stuff. So not a huge fan of it i rarely ever see it though it can get you out of a bind but for the most part if you're in that kind of situation you're either dead anyway or you're better off running something else in the mid slot like i don't know like a cap injector or something like that something that increases your survivability rather than this uh for the most part so 
that's pretty much it on, on the burst chamber. Plus, it uses a ton of cap. Uh, depending on the ship, it uses a ton of capacitor. The next one is the disruptor. And I'm going to put this up in S tier too. I mean, like I said, I mean, I'm also going to just kind of jump ahead too. This is the scram. So if you guys didn't know, like the green is the disruptor, blue is the scram. I'm going to just put both of these up in S tier. These are the modules that make the game go around, right? If there wasn't any way to kind of lock people down, they would just warp off and just no one would ever die for the most part if there was no such thing as scram or disruptor um and the reason also why i put these up here is that these actually scale you can actually get uh you know kaldari navy fed navy you can get uh some pretty blinked versions of this and there's actually quite a few um there's a skirmish links there's also some ships that get bonuses to extra uh, disruptor range like some of the galente ships as well as the uh, mordu legion so these things can get buffed really really far and so and especially things like um ships that use skirmish links i mean it's, there's some ships in the game that can use a disruptor all the way out to 70 kilometers you know it's it's absolutely ridiculous and same thing with the scram you I mean you can scram targets out to like 25 30 kilometers you know with the perfect implants and ships and uh setup and all that kind of stuff it's it's pretty crazy but um again these are just the two modules that i think in my opinion that make the ship go around these are probably the two modules as well as bubbles that have caused the most ship ship deaths in the game and, and we honestly need them so uh, the next one is the ECM jammer. I know it just shows the blue, but this represents like the blue, the green, the yellow, and the red, uh, different jams. Uh, I'm going to put this in B tier. So situationally, these are very, very strong. If you bring the right colors, the right scripts, they're going to be very effective. So if you're bringing blues um, against uh, Basilisk, if you're bringing reds against, uh, or sorry, yellows like against Guardians or against uh, Triglavians, things like that, like they're going to be very, very effective. But if you bring the wrong colors, um, it's not going to be very effective and of course you know the other thing i'm not a huge fan of with these is that you can't really peel for yourself what i mean by that is if you are flying something like a griffin or a uh, kieran and you're jamming something like a like a jackdaw or like a beam legion or anything like that with super long range cool you can jam it but it can still target you and shoot you and you can still get yourself killed which is why i do think some other modules are a bit better but again i, I think the main thing that's going against the ecm um, in this case is that because when you jam it it can still target you it can still kill you and or do damage and on top of that if you do bring the wrong colors uh, and you're not and those type of ships just aren't on grid or if you just don't have the uh kind of intel ahead of time these can pretty much be worthless or they're very 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 uh ineffective at what they do so uh still situationally very strong but i'm going to put them in the in b tier just because it's so situationally uh dependent the next one is the warp disruption field generator and I'm just kind of putting both scripts in here. So, you know, either you have the long infinite point or you're doing the bubble around it, which is basically the exact same thing as this bubble, except you can make it much bigger based on how much you skill into it. Uh, the bubbles can get bigger in the infinite point script. And um, where I put this is, and again, this, if you're in low sec or something like that, this is very high. Or if you're in null sec and you want to infinitely point uh, cap ships, like this is very, very effective. Um, I feel like you just do the same thing with, with a bubble for the most part. And again, I'm coming, coming, cutting from the perspective of a wormholer and this is just something we don't do very often uh, plus there's only like four ships in the game that can actually use this i know i'm kind of make the same argument with the bubbler but the bubbler is just much faster it can actually uh tackle it works well as small gang uh it's also a small ship so you can actually fit it in some tight holes in wormhole space you know so you're a small ship you can fit through but as for this i mean i, I guess technically Hicks could also fit through small holes as well if you have the little mass entangler, but I I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, for the most part, I'll put it down here in C tier just because the ships that do use this are very effective, but they tend to be a bit slow. Uh, they have very, very high resist, which is nice, but I think just for my PvP style, like I'd much rather have a bubbler than a Hick, in my personal opinion. Um, I know these can be very, very effective. It just depends on the setup. Um, it, it just seems like if you are bringing in a hick, it requires a lot of support around it in order for it to be effective and you're running a specific kind of fleet. But with a bubbler, you can run in small gang, large fights, big fights, uh, disruption. You can do a lot of things with it. Next one is the grappler. So this is something that can only be fit on battleships. And where I ended up putting this was, I believe I put it down in C tier. Let me double check. I do have like a small list. Yeah, I did put it down in C tier. And I guess I'm... These really are in order from left to right. Maybe I'll do that at the very, very end. But a grappler is down here mostly because it's extremely effective within like five kilometers. It really, really slows down targets. It goes up to like 90% as long as it's within like one, you know, a thousand uh, meters of you. But anything beyond that, 
Um, it can really only go out to 11 kilometers, even though it can still target stuff and slow them out to like 15. It's so, the slow is so insignificant. It's, it's not even noticeable, which is why I prefer something like the web, which we'll cover here obviously in a little bit. Uh, there's no way to really scale it because it's a web. Like there's a lot of ships in the game that get web bonuses, but because this is considered a grappler, it doesn't get that bonus. So as far as I know, there's no ships in the game that get like a, a grappler bonus or the, I, I'm not even sure if this benefits from something like info links that give it uh, extra e war range. So I'm not even sure uh, if that's a thing as well. So or maybe it's skirm links that bonus the webs. So I'm not entirely sure. The next one is guidance disruptor. I ended up putting and of course <laughs> entirely dependent and I'm trying to think of like the average PvP fight, how often you're running things with like missiles and you know, if you're fighting a golem versus a varger versus this, um, I ended up putting this down at C tier. I think this kind of runs in the same issue as the ECM um, as well. Like if you bring a missile disruptor and you're out roaming, but you're just fighting a lot of turret ships, you know, that's that's kind of unfortunate. Basically, the missile disruption is basically useless. Um, I guess we can also do the tracking disruptor too as well for turrets. I'm actually going to put this in B tier because if you disrupt turrets, you can actually straight up just make them miss. So if you're actually doing like a tracking disruption on uh, a turret like platform and they're using arties or doesn't matter what it is, any kind of turret, they can actually just straight up miss and you take no damage. But if you do missile guidance, they can still apply some damage because I mean, technically missiles can like quote unquote never miss, but you can still disrupt it or shorten their range. So I guess they can miss. But overall, I do think that the turret is a bit more effective. Plus, I do see a lot of Vargers. I, I do think Vargers are probably the most popular uh, ship in the game. And plus, you could argue three of the four Marauders do use turrets. At, you know, then the Golem just uses missiles. So uh, this is going to be more effective, arguably. And this is pretty much, I mean, to be honest, when we bring these, it's kind of like the only time we bring them is when we're finding like big battleships or uh, ships that are using large guns. We want to disrupt it. Um, that's typically the best way to go about it, which is why I put turret disruptors a bit higher because they can straight up miss missile guidance. Uh, you can, they can still hit and do damage, but still effective, just not as reliable in my opinion. Newts. Where are newts going to go? I almost forgot to put this on this list because I was mostly thinking like mid slots, but I, you know, bubbles are a high slot thing. Uh, I'm going to put newts over at S tier and mostly because just the overall flexibility of the newt. I know there's small, medium and larges. You can upscale these. You can bling these. There's some ships that get uh, big bonuses uh, to newts. But my main thing is that if you are flying like a cruiser and above, sometimes literally your only defense to something like fast tackle is a newt, most usually a medium newt. Small newts can maybe work on a fast tackle, assuming they just like face ram you. But if they're really smart and they stay like in a good orbit, they scram you at like, you know, 11 to 12, and they're kind of just keeping that tackle on you and you just can't approach them. Um, small newt is just not going to cut it. Medium newt will allow you to actually reach out to them when they are scramming you so you can actually newt them out. Uh, and usually one cycle of a medium newt will one shot the capacitor uh, of most interceptors for the most part. So this is pretty much your, your only defense. It's very flexible. Quite literally any ship in the game can fit newts. I really like that effectiveness of it. It's also kind of fun to do bait fits where people think you have guns, but instead you're full newts and you're damaging them with drones. That's always kind of fun. Um, and again, I do think newt warfare is one of the more unique ways. Uh, it's probably sometimes one of the last things that people think about is like their capacitor, right? Not everyone runs a cap injector or, um, like a, a cap injector, like a cap battery, anything that's like new warfare resistant. So uh, I mostly I like this because of the flexibility that you can fit this on any ship. And it's it's if you're flying anything bigger than a cruiser and above and there's an interceptor, you know, coming at you and you're not able to kill it. This is pretty much your last resort. And if you don't have this, you're pretty much all but dead, especially once they get on top of you. All right. The next one is the NOS. And I think the NOS in the high slot, and this is of course a utility high slot, right? Like you, you're probably not going to be getting rid of this uh, for like a turret slot or anything like that, unless it's like the Balgorn or something. Um, I'm really debating on between B and C tier. Um, I'm only going to put it in B tier because situationally, I know not every ship in the game uses this, uses this, but most of the time, if you are running a NOS, you are trying to keep very, very critical systems and modules online. You're trying to keep them alive. So either you're a ramjag and you're keeping that NOS up. So if you do get hit with a newt, you have some way to counteract that and kind of just keep that tackle alive, uh, keep that scram on so you can actually hold tackle or like you said, like the Balgorn, 
you're running a lot of newts, maybe you're getting counter newted, you want to find a way to kind of keep your active modules running. So uh, it's mostly, you know, battleships. I mean, I'll, quite a few ships use this. It's not a first resort, but I do say the very few ships that do run an OS are usually trying to keep either active modules online, whether it's a hardener or, like I said, tackle. So I do think this is a critical part of most systems. Uh, do I think it's like strictly better than these? No, but I, I think that the times that you do run NOS for certain ships, it is very, very important. I think that's where it is. So maybe, maybe it's actually C tier. Uh, like I said, it's, it's situationally very, very good for extremely specific ships. And I think that's where this fits for the most part. So I'm going to drop this down to C tier. Now, as for sensor damps, and as someone that has run into a lot of different corporations that run sensor damps against us, we do it against them. Uh, I'm going to put this up at A tier. I don't think they're S tier because they're not situationally best, you know, all the time. But I do think sensor damps are extremely effective. Uh, the only time where sensor damps aren't super effective is during like a brawl is the best you can do is maybe like lower their lock time. So it takes them a little bit longer to lock some of your ships. But the main benefit of sensor damps is that you can lower the lock range of certain ships. And sometimes just having something like one carries or one uh, Lachesis, usually Lachesis are used for you know, long points and stuff like that, but they do have sensor damp bonuses as well. Um, is that, I mean, sometimes you're just putting one damp on four different ships, uh, one damp on one ship and then a few others, you can lock down three, four ships lock range and they just cannot target you or any of your allies. And this is kind of what I was talking about earlier, which is why in, you know, in a good amount of situations, I do think it's better than the ECM because if you are damping that uh, beam legion or that, um, I would say the Jackdaw's a bit, the Jackdaw does have a resistance against sensor damps, but at least you have something to do it. So you might have to put two damps on the Jackdaw in order for it to not target you. But the nice thing is, is that if there there is uh, a ship that is running beams or artillery or very long range light missiles or anything like that, you just lock that target, you sensor damp it, then if you keep a good enough range, it just can't lock you. So it's a nice way to peel for yourself. You don't have to rely on allies uh, to basically kill the target before you die. You could just sensor damp it and now it can't lock you anymore because you've shortened its range <laughs> so low uh, and sometimes this sensor damp thing can completely just uh neuter a uh some marauders i mean sometimes if you're shooting something from far away uh and marauders are trying to shoot out to like 50 if you put three or four damps on a marauder i mean that thing is not locking in anything further than like 30 maybe even shorter than that i know that marauders have crazy lock range but um, this is also extremely good for like small gang, uh, very nano kite type things. Uh, but sometimes people are running like long range fits. Uh, I really, really like sensor damps. And the nice thing is you can put this on ships that don't get the bonus. Like some, sh some of these modules are just not good on any other ship like ECM. There's really no reason to run ECM on unbonus ships. I would say the only, I take that back. Actually, a lot of armor ships can make use of decentralized E-War in their mid slots, running things like jams. And even though it's not the best, it's still something. Um, sensor damps is you can actually put this on Jackdaws. There's a couple other ships you can put this on. Uh, even though it's unbonus, just lowering the target range of certain ships is really, really strong. So I know I've been kind of harping on this one for a while, so we'll go ahead and go to the next one. Target painting. Oof. I was almost debating putting in a D tier. I don't think it's terrible. But I might have to put it down in C tier, which is what I think. I'm just going to put it in B tier. I, it's it's effective. Let's say this. Whenever you put it on something, it's going to be effective 100% of the time. The issue is, is that if you are trying to do something like target paint a... Um, if you're trying to target paint something like a Guardian, you know, which is one of those uh, T2 Logies for the Amar. Those things sig radius are super tiny because remember this thing increases the target sig radius so for a lot of armor ships if you're trying to paint an armor ship i mean it still helps don't get me wrong but that thing has a sig radius of like 80 90 and you're only and even if you have like a max bonus like ship or anything like that let's say it gets up to like 50 percent i mean you're only getting it from 90 from 90 all the way up to like 135 which is still a very very tiny uh sig radius now this is going to be really really strong against shielded battleships battle cruisers uh, maybe even some like bigger armor ships for the most part. But like if you're trying to target paint something with like a tiny sig radius, it's not helping as much as, in my opinion, something like a web. Um, and of course, like the Mimitar do have bonuses to uh, webs and target painters. But I do think webs um, are going to be the best in this uh, scenario. So actually, I'm going to put webs all the way up in A tier. Um, I think webs are 
extremely good. Uh, obviously, you can obviously upscale these two as well. There's a lot of ships that benefit from web range. Uh, you can get Fed Navy, you can get all kinds of stuff, you can get Bling, you can even Abyssal roll these, not all these modules can get Abyssal rolled, so, um, but I do think webs are, in my opinion, just better than target paints. I know you can target paint out super, super far, and it's probably niche for certain fits, but webs are always going to be um, welcome. It's arguably S tier, I would say it's on the border of S and A tier, because again, this is another one of those things where... Um, if you're able to slow down certain targets, it's very good against AB. This is the only counter against Afterburner comps, because basically, Scram doesn't slow them down. Disruptor, I mean, it keeps them on grid, but they can kind of just keep burning away. Uh, and unless you can lock them down, they're going to keep doing full damage to you. So, webs are uh, very, very effective. And like I said, there are a lot of ships that do make very good use of webs, particularly uh, Minmatar ships as well. Webs, very, very strong. Now, wobbles. So if you guys didn't know, Wobbles are basically just like AoE web bubble kind of things. Um, they explode and they kind of keep a uh, persistent web like in the area, I believe. I don't know if it's you activate it and it has a persistent web effect in a small area where everything is slowed or any targets in that area once it's activated is then slowed. And if you then jump into it, like let's say five to ten seconds later, it's not effective. I'm not entirely sure. Either way, obviously people are not using this thing at all. So no one is using Wobbles right now. Maybe outside of like Alliance tournament situations or extremely niche scenarios in certain parts of space, but I've rarely ever seen wobbles uh, being used. I mean, more often than not, just using normal bubbles, whether they're surgical or normal bubbles, those are going to be much more effective in actually holding things um, on grid, in my honest opinion. So, uh, yeah, I'm kind of curious what your guys' tier list is. And again, this is kind of perspective of someone that does a lot of wormhole. I do fly certain ships. We do have a certain doctor and all that stuff. So I'm kind of curious if you guys agree with this tier list order. So obviously down in the comments, as well as the description, I'm going to be putting a link to this. You guys can fill it out yourself. And I'm curious what your guys' opinions are as well. So uh, also be giving away scope syndication skin. So put a comment with your in-game name as well. And uh, yeah, that's it. Hope you guys take care and I'll catch you next time.